Hello, welcome back. We're going to do my 2022 reading statistics. So 2022 was actually a really great year for me in regards to reading. I read the most books I've ever read, literally ever, in a year. So uh, that was really awesome. And for this, I'm actually just going to do my story graph statistics because I don't know how to view them on my computer on Goodreads. So we're just going to do story graph because I like I like their statistics better anyway so it's fine um, I've got my laptop over here so I will be looking there I will put some of the graphs up here just so you can see them because I think they're fun um, so last year my goal was to read 75 books and I surpassed that and I read 91 books which was really awesome I was really hoping to get to 100 but it just didn't happen but yeah, I was pretty happy with that. So across, ah, across 91 books, I read 38,168 pages, which is a lot. That's like a lot, a lot. Not anything compared to my sister who read like 70,000 pages, but still cheapers. So for moods, the I, I love Storygraph. The different kind of moods that I read. My my biggest mood that I read was Adventurous, which is pretty obvious. If you follow my channel, it's a lot of fantasy. A lot of fantasy adventure, a lot of fantasy romance. So that was my biggest mood. And then it went emotional and dark were roughly the same amount. Uh, not quite. My Adventurous, I read 60 books that were adventurous. 37 that were emotional and 31 that were dark. And then after that, it went mysterious, lighthearted, tense, funny, reflective, hopeful, sad, informative, relaxing, and challenging. So those were kind of my, that was my vibe. That's pretty accurate. I mean, I just mainly read a lot of fantasy, so you'll see that later on too. The pacing. Um, my biggest pacing was 54%, and that was medium paced. So I read a lot of just medium paced books. I uh, didn't read a whole lot of slow because I just can't. S slow pace? I don't like it. 9% uh, of my books were slow paced. 54% was 40, 49 books were medium paced. Uh, and 37% of my books were fast paced, which makes sense because I did read quite a bit of manga this year. So, or last year, I guess. So that makes sense. But anyway. Um, page number count. I like these. These are fun. I was almost pretty even across the three. My biggest one was 43%, which was 39 books that fell between the 300 to 499 pages category. And then the next biggest one was 30% were less than 300 pages, and that was 27 books. And then 27% were 500 pages and over, which was 25 books. So, I mean, that's still a lot of, like 25 books that were 50 pages or 500 pages or more, that's crazy. So now, <laughs> this graph always makes me laugh because it's it just blows out of the water. Fiction versus nonfiction, 97% 97% of the books I read were fictional, which is completely obvious. I don't read a whole lot of nonfiction. You guys know that. Um, yeah. So 3%, three books, three nonfiction books. But I feel like it could technically be four books because I, I technically finished it this year, which is 2023. But really, I read most of all of it last year, which is what to expect when you're expecting. And so that could probably fall in there, but it's going to fall in 2023s. All right, genres. This one, yeah, you can you can see that fantasy and romance by far were my biggest genres. So romance was actually number one, which is kind of surprising. Uh, was fifty three books, and then fantasy was fifty one, and of course, 
many of those overlap. So it's kind of whatever. But it looks like I have a lot of genres, which is kind of crazy. After that, we have Young Adult, uh, which was 18. Manga was 12. And then Contemporary was 11. Those are my top five that I read. Um, or like the genres that I read. Then we've got Middle Grade, Thriller, Mystery, Classics, Dystopian, Children's, LGBTQIA, Speculative Fiction, Graphic Novels, Sports, uh, Self-Help, Science Fiction, Memoir, Horror, Historical, Health, Essays, Crime, and Comics. And of course, like, all of those are going to overlap, and many of the books that I read have more than just one of those genres, so... I don't know, but that's a really wide range of genre that I'm kind of happy with. Um, once it gets to, uh, where, I mean, contemporary, my top five are all over 10 each. Once you get below that, it's all less than 10. So yeah, I don't know. Anyway, moving on this one. I really enjoyed doing this year. This was the format. And so it's audio, digital, and print. So I made sure, because I knew these graphs existed because I always looked at them all the time, to be really particular about choosing which edition I'm reading on Story Graph so it would be accurate. Um, obviously, uh, well, not obviously, I guess. Uh, my, my majority that I read were print, and that was 62%. So 57 of the books that I read were physical. Um, and then digital was 28%. So I read 24 digital books, which actually seems kind of small. It's like a small amount for me. Well, maybe not. I don't know. Um, but audio, I had 10 audiobooks, which if you know me, I don't do audiobooks like ever. I always talk about how I just can't handle the narrators a whole lot at the time. I just don't enjoy, they just sound robotic. Uh, but I re-listened to the Zodiac Academy on Audible and the narrators were fantastic. Literally, they did Bridget and her husband, Jordan Bordeaux. Amazing. They are, they sound like people, which was great. And so I really, really liked that. So when we break that down versus pages versus hours listened to, whereas like before we saw as like 36 or something thousand, this breaks it down to 32,756 pages read and then 171.02 hours listened to. I don't know, I just, I really like the statistics. I think it's cool. Um, and then we go down to most read authors. And three of them are tied for number one with 11 books each. That was Sarah J. Mass. Um, and then Suzanne and Carolyn Peckham who co-write the Zodiac Academy and Ruthless Boys and all that. And those are what I read this year. Or last year. I feel like I was saying this year. Um, and then Kiyosuke Motomi. He is the author. I think it's a he. I, it could be a she though. Um, they wrote all the manga that I read. And I read 10. <laughs> so those were really good. I really liked those. And then it drops down to four. And there were three that I read four of. C.S. Lewis, Tui T. Th Sutherland, and Raven Kennedy. And then it drops down to three for the last ones, which is Colleen Hoover, Kira Cass, and Carrie Maniscalco. So I think that's fun. They also have a languages graph. I, they were all in English, so there's not a cool graph for that one. Um, and then I love, I love the line graphs. I love them a lot. Number of books and pages. So the blue line is the books that I read, and then the red line is the pages that I read. So let's see some fun statistics. December was actually my most pages read, and I read 3,810 pages, which is insane. Um, but I only read seven books that time. My highest amount of books read in a month was 11. Um, my lowest amount of books read was six, and that was in May, January, and October. And then my lowest amount of pages read was actually in June. And I read 2,320 pages. And that was across 10 books. <laughs> I think that was, a, that was a month I read a bunch of the... I think I finished the manga. Because they're like 190 pages each. So I flew through those. Right? Yeah. 
Uh, star readings. This one I can't, I'm not even going to show you guys because I don't know how to make a reading in Storygraph because I'm apparently not tech savvy. Uh, so my average rating says it's 3.83. It's really not. Um, cause I only reviewed six books apparently. And I think those were the ones that had come in from Goodreads cause I started using Storygraph at the beginning of the year. And if you want to do a story graph and you have a Goodreads, you can actually import your Goodreads information into story graph, which is what I did. Otherwise, that sounds like so much work. So it's got my entire Goodreads history on there. So do I'm going to try really fast on Goodreads to see if I can view my challenge. I don't know how to view it where it tells me all the fun things. Okay, I don't know how to view them on here. So instead, what I'm going to do is go through... All the books that I read in 2022, I'm just going to look at them because they're looking at me right now and tell you which ones uh, were some of my favorites and which ones not so much. Are you sleepy, Blubby? Yeah, you're so sleepy. Okay, so we're going to start at the beginning of the year. And we're going to start off strong with Beautiful Nightmares. Freaking love that book. So good. That's by KJ Sutton. This is the fourth book in the Fortuna Sworn series with the fifth one coming out, I think, in June. I need to pre-order that still. I, dark fantasy, romance, so good. Freaking love it. Um, Verity, that was the first, like, thriller, I guess, technically, I read in January, or I guess in the beginning of the year. Really good. I, that was probably my favorite Colleen Hoover book that I've read. It was also the first Colleen Hoover book that I've read. I don't know how well I would do reading it now as a mother, but... At the time, he wasn't even a thought, and um, I was okay. But just so you know, there are some, maybe some trigger warnings for moms uh, and children and child death. So just, uh, but I really liked it. And then I guess I really loved Reading Ruthless Boys. Those were all really good. There's five of them. I read the last three this year so good um not everyone's cup of tea though so just oh top tier absolute top tier crescent city house of earth and earth and blood house of sky and breath oh my goodness so good i just got my sister started on throne of glass and i want her to read akatar next i'm gonna probably just force it down her throat and then i'm gonna make her read crescent city because we need to talk uh so ah those were so freaking good um, kind of slow, really long books, but the ending just makes it worth it on both of them and the ties and the Easter eggs and just like everything. Mm, I'm, I'm going to reread that actually this year. I'm really excited to do that once I finish Akatar. So good. Um, another pleasant surprise was A Shadow in the Ember, uh, by Jennifer L. Armentrout. That... I, yeah, I really loved that. I have A Light in the Flame that I need to read still. I haven't done it. But A Shadow in the Ember was really good. It reminded me of The Bridge Kingdom and, uh, no. The Bridge Kingdom and From Blood and Ash combined, which is why I, like, really liked it. And I just really liked the storyline. And it also helped a little bit with when War of Two Queens came out to understand some things a little bit more. Or, like, see things coming. I don't know. I liked it. I liked it for sure. Uh, a couple, let's do a disappointment. Uh, Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. That I read as a book of the month. It was a thriller. I did not understand the, well, okay. I felt a little bit of thrill, but it was really, really, really underwhelming. Like I wanted more suspense and a little more terror and I didn't get any of that in there. It was just kind of boring and it was a huge letdown at the end at what happened. I just felt like it was really underwhelming. Uh, okay. Oh, here we go. Another top tier series that I read, Throne of Glass, which I have my sister reading right now. I, uh, the more I think back on it, the more I'm like, really 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 enjoying and loving throne of glass but at the time i was kind of like meh although once i got to like air of fire and queen of shadows really good um i would like to reread those at some point too because there's just so much in that that series so stinking good though i really 
I think about Kingdom of Ash all the time. And I think about the 13 all the time. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Another disappointment was another thriller. And that was Breathless by Amy McColster. No. McCulloch. And again, I didn't feel the thrill. I didn't feel the suspense. You could see what was coming. And it just was a little bit disappointing. And that was a, a hiking, um, a mountaineering thriller and it just such a bummer the reckless girls one was like a mysterious island kind of thriller all right moving up the midnight library that one was a huge pleasant surprise maybe one of my favorite books of the year uh definitely has themes of death <laughs> like that is the main theme uh but also being okay with how your life is going i don't know I don't know how to describe this book. It's just absolutely, I really, really loved it. I liked the message that you got and I just really, really loved all the scenarios and it ended exactly how I wanted it to end, which was perfect. But um, just trigger warnings of suicide, ideation, death, that kind of stuff in here. Depression, really good though, really good. Ooh, another really good one that I need to finish the series of was The Wing Feather Saga by Andrew Peterson. I read On the Dark Sea of Darkness, and I need to just finish it. There's three more books, and I have them, and I just need to read them. They're so good. They're, like, adventure-y um, and, like, mysterious or uh, what do you call that? Like, hidden um, identities almost, hidden histories. I just, it was really cute. It was really sweet and I need to keep reading it. So I'm going to read that one soon too. One of the, the, another really good book was The Book Woman's Daughter by Kim Michelle Richardson. This is the sequel to The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek. I will always love this book so much and I will always love the first book so much. I highly recommend that. It's just about a book woman in the Appalachian Mountains literally just delivering books in the 1930s I think it's the 1930s so stinking good um I'll try to skip some of these a good oh my gosh one of the biggest disappointments I've never rated a book so low in my life was throttled by Lauren Asher oh my gosh I gave that two stars I don't even know why I bothered with two worst book I've ever read in my life it's about an f1 driver and I just no, not for me. If you like pure smut pretty much with a horrible plot, I don't want to say a horrible plot line. I'm being a little harsh. Uh, with a subpar plot line, that's a book for you. I just, mm, nope, it was too cheesy. The writing was just cringy. Uh, my husband really likes F1. Like we watch it every year. And so I was like, ooh, let me read an F1 book to kind of be, I don't know, cute with you. Never again. Never again. Um, okay. The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. Cute romance. Clean. Takes place in Texas about a bodyguard. A uh, short girl. Small bodyguard for this like A-list celebrity. I don't even know if he's A-list. But anyway. Really cute. Uh, another one that stood out to me was Kingdom of the Wicked. Oh my gosh. I loved that little trilogy. Ha! This was so good. It's like, it's about the princes of hell and these witches in this, I don't know, like Italy kind of. And they're like these special witches for some reason. They have like, like a certain, not a power, but like a, a charm almost to protect them. Cause they were like prophesized for something. Anyway, so freaking good. Oh my gosh. I love it. Love that trilogy. I need to get the paperback of the last one sometime. Um, okay, I'm just going to skip some. Ah, okay. Another disappointment was the Golden Enclaves. Wasn't really feeling it. It was really slow. Really slow. But it got better at the very end. You guys know my thoughts on it. It's in one of my previous videos uh, recently. Um... Okay, the last series that really stood out to me was the Plated Prisoner series by Raven Kennedy. 
uh, Gil Glint Gleam and Glow. Oh my goodness, those are really good. Um, not a huge plot driven, but very character driven. And I just really liked the characters and I liked the magic in it. And I liked, I liked the characters a lot. Okay, okay, we're almost done, we're almost done. Okay, last one. The last one that really stood out to me that I would yeah. call a favorite was Ledge by Stacey McEwen. This was really good. It's fantasy, fantasy romance, definitely. Okay, I know. But uh, I talk about it in my December wrap up. So if you want to know what that one's actually about, I would suggest going there because this one's getting fussy and we need to wrap this up, right? Yeah. So those were my books. Not a whole lot of disappointments. Um, I, I had a really good reading year. I really liked a lot of the books that I read. Most of the books that I read for sure. And I really would love 2023 to go that way. But I don't think it's going to as of how January went. My reading goal. Can you be quiet? My reading goal for 2023 is 50 books. That might be pushing it a little too high. I had to bring it down from 75 last from last year because I just know that I won't be able to get there. At this rate, 50 seems to be a little, I don't know, maybe a little bit of a stretch. But we're going to try. Once we get the hang of being a mom and having a kiddo, might be able to read more. <laughs> anyway, that was my 2022 reading statistics and my 2023 reading goals. Let me know what some of your statistics were. I would really love to know. Do you have a story graph? Do you use it? Be my friend. I should put my link down below because I don't have that one on there. I just have Goodreads. And then let me know what's your reading goal for 2023. I would love to know what you guys are wanting to read and how many books you're wanting to read and if you're challenging yourself. And with that said, we're going to go. <laughs> Thank you guys for sticking around for another year. Um, 2022 is awesome. I'm really looking forward to 2023. Happy New Year, and I don't know. That's it. I hope you guys have a great week, and I'll see you guys in my next video. <laughs> Bye!